Okay, so now we're going to talk about the ideal gas laws. And uh, what we have seen is that there's a relationship between volume and pressure. You know, volume is directly proportional to 1 over pressure. Volume is directly proportional to temperature. Of course, that assumes Kelvin. Volume is directly proportional to the number of moles. If I combine all these, I get um, nT over P is directly proportional to V. And if I want to replace this proportionality constant, I need to find a, a constant that makes that equation true. And that constant is known as my um, ideal gas constant, capital R. Okay. So depending on my units for pressure or, um, or volume, my R units change. Now, the two that you need to know for uh, the AP exam, they're both on the sheet, but again, if you're not, uh, if you're taking the multiple choice, you won't have that sheet. So basically, most of the gas law problems use this, 0.08206, and it's liters atmospheres over mole K. Now, if you are dealing with energy, if you need joules, if you're dealing with energy, the R will switch to 8.314. Okay? Now, what you need to always make sure of is if you're using this 0.08206, that you have your volume in liters and your atmospheres, your pressure is in atmospheres, and of course you have temperature in Kelvin, because you would never think of not doing that. So we end up with this equation, uh, as you know, is Pivner, PV equals NRT. <coughs> All right, so let's go ahead and use our PIVNERT. Okay, so let's just pause here for once. Okay, so calcium carbonate decomposes upon heating to give calcium oxide and CO2. We have a sample of calcium carbonate it is decomposed, and the carbon dioxide is collected in a flask. After the dec decomposition, the gas has a pressure of 1.3 atmospheres, and temperature of 31, and we want to know how many moles of gas. Okay, so we can use Pipner for this, PV equals NRT. I want to solve for moles, so moles, if I divide both sides by PV, I get, um, or divide both sides by RT, I get moles is PV over RT. So let's fill in what we know. So we know this is 1.3 atm. We know volume is 250 milliliters. Now, I need that in liters in order to use my R of 0 .08, 0 0.08206, right? Because that is liters, atmospheres, over moles, K, okay? 1.3, so this is 0 0.250 liters over my R, which is 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres over moles K times my T. Now my T is 31 uh, Celsius and if I add 273 to get to that I get 304 K. 304 K. So my K cancels there. My atmospheres and liters will cancel on end up with units of moles. Okay. So if I punch this I'm going to get 1.3 times 0.25 equals, divide by in parentheses, 0 0.08206 times 304, close parentheses, and I get 0 0.013 moles of CO2. And it looks like I want two sig figs, 0 0.013 moles. Okay, let's take a look at another. Okay, a gas pressure in an aerosol can is 1.5 atm at 25C. Assuming the gas inside obeys the ideal gas equation, what would the pressure be if we heated the can to 450? Okay, so it uh, talks about the ideal gas equation, but in fact, that's not really what you need here. What we have is change in conditions. We're starting at 1.5 atm at, two, at 25 degrees C, which is 298K and we are heating it up to 450, which is 273. So this is really a, a gas law problem, not a pip nerd. 
So that's 723. It goes up to 723K. And wants to know what's happening to my pressure. So all I have to do is take my pressure of 1.5 atmospheres. And th these laws assume ideal behavior, right? <coughs> Which is what it's really talking about here. So if my temperature goes way up, my pressure will go way up. So I want a factor to make it go up. And that's going to be over 298K. And if I punch all this, I end up with uh, 1, 1.5 times 723 divide by 298 oops 298 and I get 3.6 I want 263 3.6 atm pressure goes way up okay so um, some of the common problems on the uh, AP exam are density problems in the, the key I think to get density problems or think of density as um, remember that we're usually talking about grams per liter so when you're given density you're given your volume which is one liter okay and if you get a problem where it tells you to identify the gas the way you identify any substance usually is by finding its molar mass okay all right so let's take a look at some <coughs> so what is the density of carbon tetrachloride vapor at 714 torr in 125C. Okay, so density is, is going to be grams per liter. Uh, liters is 1, right? I don't know grams, so let's think. PV equals NRT. I have pressure. I have a, So I have a pressure. I have a temperature. I have a volume. I have a gas constant. If I si solve for moles, I should be able to figure out um, density because I know volume is one liter. Okay, so N equals PV over RT, and my pressure is equal to 714 torr. So I'm going to convert that to ATM. 714 torr, and what I know is 760 torr is one ATM. So if I punch that, I get 714. 4 divide by 760 gives me all right so let's put that there 0 0.93 and I'm going to carry as many sig figs as is reasonable because we always want to round at the end times my volume my volume I'm going to assume is 1 liter right this is ATM my R is 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres over moles K and my T is going to be, it's 125C. If I add to that 273, I get 8, 9, it's 398. Okay, my K will cancel, liters atmosphere will cancel. I'll end up with units of moles. And uh, when I do that, I get, let me see, 0 0.9, let's, actually, let's, let's do this. Let's go up. I pick that up. Oops, never mind. That was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. All right. I'm going to clear that. And I'm going to enter 0.93, 0.93, 947, divide by, in parentheses, 0 0.08206 times 398, close my parentheses, and I get... 0 0.0287.65 grams of carbon tetrachloride. Okay. And what I know is there are um, molar mass of carbon tetrachloride. Carbon is 12.01. Uh, uh, tetrachloride, that's chlorine times 4 times 35.45. So let's figure that out. So 4 times 30... Oops. 4 times 35.45 equals plus 12... 
O1 equals, so my molar mass is 153.61. Okay, I'm sorry. This is this is not grams. This is moles. So I have that many moles, and what I know is one mole of carbon tetrachloride is 153.61 grams. So I multiply 153.61 times my 0 0.028765, and I get 4.41. 4.41 grams, and we said one liter is what we're starting with grams per liter. This is my density. <coughs> okay, so the, the density of a gas was measured at 1.5 atm, 27c, 1.95 grams per liter. We want to find the molar mass. Okay, so again, PV equals nRT. If I find my N, that should lead me to my molar mass. Okay, so N is PV over RT. P in this case is 1.5 atm. V is, I'm going to assume, 1 liter, right? Grams per 1 liter. My R is 0 0.08206. My T is 27 plus 273, that's 300 K. Okay, so what I have, I'm going to clear this. And I get 1.5 1 divided by 0 0.08206 times 300. Close my parentheses. And I get 0 0.06098 grams. I'm sorry, I get 0 0.0906 moles. Okay, so if I have 0 0.0609 grams, now molar mass is grams per mole, right? So if I take my grams, which I was given here, 1.95 grams, and I divide it by how many moles I have, divided by 0 0.0609 moles, I get 1.95 Oops. Divided by, and I'm just going to go up and pick up this number. Divided by that number equals 32 grams per mole. Okay, and I bet you could figure out what gas it is if it says it's a uh, uh, diatomic gas, and uh, it would be oxygen, right? All right, one more molar mass of a gas. All right, a series of measurements are made to determine the molar mass of an unknown gas. This is actually a nice problem for stoic and everything else. Okay, I'm just doing a bunch of stuff we've learned about. Okay. All right, so a series of measurements are made to determine the molar mass of an unknown gas. First, the flask is evacuated and found to weigh this. It is then filled with a gas to a pressure of that many torres, 31 degrees. It is reweighed, and this is its mass. So this, this tells us the mass of the gas. So let's find, figure out the mass of the gas. It's going to be 137.456 grams minus empty 0.567 grams. This is going to be... Um, let me see, 2.889 grams of gas, okay. All right, it is, uh, find the flask is filled with water at 31 degrees C and found to weigh 1067.9 grams. Okay, so, the, and the density of water is this. So this is uh, going to allow us to figure out the volume of the container. So what we know is the flask empty weighed um, this, and the flask filled all the way with water weighs this. 
and if we know the mass of the whole thing of water and the density, we can figure out the volume. So let's do that. So this is uh, 1067.9 minus the flask empty, which is 134.567. And if I subtract those, I get uh, 933.33 grams of water. And what I know from this density is uh, there's 0.997 grams in one milliliters. Now I'm going to have to get this to liters, but let's just do this. Um, I'll, I'll put one more factor there. It says 1,000 milliliters is one liter. And this is going to give us um, 0.9361 liters. Okay. So we know the mass of the gas, we know the volume, we know the pressure, we know the temperature. Okay, we want to know the molar mass. Okay, so we're going to do um, N equals PV over RT again. Pressure is 735 torr, so I'm just going to leave that at 735 divided by 760, right? That will give me ATM. Uh, pressure times my volume is 0.9361 liters and my R is 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres over moles K. This is atmospheres here. And my K is 31C, 31 and 273 is 304. So that's 304. All of my units will cancel, liters atmospheres, so I'll be left with moles. And the number of moles will be, let's punch it, so 735 divided by 760, first to give me the atmospheres, times 0 0.9361 liters equals, I'm going to divide that by in parentheses, 0 0.082206 times 304, close the parentheses, and I get um, point, point oh three six two nine moles okay, of this gas. Okay, <coughs> and I have this many grams. So again, let's do it up here. Molar mass is grams over moles. I have 2.889 grams. I have 0.03629 uh, moles. So let's divide this. I'm going to get 2.889 divide by 0 0.03629 equals 79. 79.7 grams per mole. Looks like that agrees with the answer. Okay. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of gas stoichiometry. Um, so remember, you know, we can go from mass to moles using um, molar mass. We can go from moles to number of particles, atoms, or molecules using Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Hopefully it's uh, sort of ingrained in your brain now that molarity is moles times volume, or moles over volume. So moles is molarity times volume. So I can go back and forth between moles and molarity. Um, but the one that we're going to focus on mostly here is if I'm at STP, uh, I use the molar volume. 22.4 liters is one mole of any gas, right? And if I'm not at STP, I have to figure out my volume using Pevnert, PV equals NRT, or V equals NRT over P. Okay, so here we have <coughs> safety airbags. And automobiles are inflated by nitrogen gas generated by the rapid decomposition of sodium azide. Okay, if an airbag has a volume of 36 liters, 
filled with nitrogen gas at a pressure of 1.15 atm, temperature of 26, how many grams of sodium azide must be decomposed? Okay, so this is a stoic problem. It's a stoic problem and it's a pivot problem. So I first have to figure out how many moles of this I have. And once I know how many moles of this I have, I can use stoic to figure out how much of this I, I need. Okay, so I have, um, let's, let's figure out N equals PV over RT to get the moles of uh, nitrogen gas. My pressure is 1.15 atmosphere. My volume is 36 liters. I'm going to put that over 0.08206 liters atmospheres over moles K times 20, um, this is still over, times 26 C, which is 299K. Okay, my units will all cancel. So if I punch this, I'm going to get 1.15 times 36 equals divide by 0 0.082006 times 299, close my parentheses and I get 1.687 moles of nitrogen. Okay, and based on this, I have to figure out how much sodium azide I need, how many grams of that. So what I know is there are, from the stoichiometry, is there are three moles of nitrogen give me, come from two moles of sodium azide, and I also know that one, um, this is moles, one mole of sodium azide has a molar mass of Nitrogen is 3, so let me see, that's 14.5 uh, times 3 equals plus 22.9 is sodium, 99. That's my molar mass, okay? And this is 65.02. All right, so let's plug and chug. So I got 65.02 times 2 times 1.687 equals divide by 3. Keep your fingers crossed. And we get nice 73 grams of sodium azide. It looks like I want three sig figs. Okay. All right, quicklime is produced by the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate. Calculate the volume of carbon dioxide at STP produced from the decomposition of 152 grams of calcium carbonate by the reaction. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. Um, looks like I have a balanced reaction. So I'm starting with 152 grams of calcium carbonate and um, once I know how many moles of that I have I can use a stoic and figure out how much how many um, liters of carbon dioxide I need right it's at all at STP which makes this really simple so I got to figure out the molar mass of calcium carbonate so let's do that uh, so three oxygens is uh, going to be 48 48 plus 12.01 for carbon plus uh, calcium is 40.08 that's a molar mass of 100.09 okay grams of calcium carbonate is one mole of calcium carbonate and I need one mole of calcium carbonate to get one mole of CO2 and one mole of CO2 is 22.4 liters of CO2. So I'm just going to do a plug and a chug. So it's 152 times 
22.4 equals divide by 100.09 close my parentheses and I get 34 looks like I want 3 sig figs 34 point looks like point o liters okay all right sample of methane gas having a volume of 28 liters at 25 C and 165 atmospheres was mixed with a sample of oxygen having a volume of 35 liters at 31 C and 1.25 atmospheres mixture was ignited to form CO2 in water calculate the volume of CO2 formed at the pressure of 2.5 atmospheres and temperature of 125 C okay so this is a combined stoic and Pivner problem and it's limiting reactant it looks like so first we're going to write the balance equation so I'm starting with methane you should know methane is CH4 combustion always means add oxygen we always get CO2 and H2O okay so I need two of those and then I'll need two of those okay so it tells me um, what I've got for methane so I'm going to start with that I gotta figure out how many moles I have so it's going to be PV over RT and this is for methane so I'm just going to write CH4 so this is going to be pressure is 1.65 atm liters uh, volume is 2.80 liters over 0.0862 0.086 0 0.082 I am losing it 0.08206 times my temperature is 25 so that would be 298 and if I punch that I get 1.65 times 2.8 equals divide by 0 0.08206 times 298 close my parentheses and I get point, point 0.188927 and it's good to carry as many sig figs as you can or as reasonable and then you round at the very end all right, so I also have to figure out how many moles of oxygen I have because it might be limiting. Let's just make sure. So moles of oxygen is going to be PV over RT. Its pressure is 1.25 atm. Its volume is 35 liters. Looks like it's going to be more. Over 0 0.08206 um, for my R times my T let me see um, the oxygen is at 31 so 31 and 273 is 304 alright pretty sure this is going to be quite a bit higher alright so I got 1.25 times 35 I missed a 5 in there punch it again times 35 equals divide by 0 0.082006 times 304 close my parentheses and I get all right quite a bit more moles 1.75 moles this is O2 and this is methane so we get a whole bunch um, of O2, plenty of O2. So what's going to limit me is the 0.1889 moles of this, which should give me 0.1889 moles of this, right? They both have a one coefficient. All right, so I want to know the the uh, volume of CO2 form. So in this case, if I take my PV equals nRT my volume is going to be nRT over P and in this case I know I should get this many moles point 0.1 let me just block this off 889 moles times my volume of CO2 which uh, I'm sorry not my volume I need my R here point 
0.08206 times my temperature which is 125 so I add 273 to that and I get 398 times 398 and my pressure there says whoops 2.5 atm what a mess huh all right so let's punch this and see what we get 0.1889 times my r 0.08206 times times 398 equals divide by 2.5 enter and I get 2.47 liters nice it's always nice when you get the right answer isn't it all right all right we're going to stop there and come back to Dalton's laws of partial pressure all right